Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. So, uh, at this point, can I ask uh, Honorable uh, uh, you know, uh, Sangha to do, do the rule of law. Uh, Sanja. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'm so grateful. I must state beforehand that uh, after listening to Honorable Muya's statement, I have lost part of my strength. I think I've gotten even more hungry because it appears that there is no light at the end of the tunnel. <coughs> I would only emphasize that our colleagues, the journalists, must take what uh, Honorable Muya has elucidated with some degree of seriousness and uh, interrogate this so that we can find out how we can help the nation to come out of the squalor it finds itself in by identifying resolutions to our problems. Um, it's good to be back, and I would also want to join my colleagues in welcoming our partners, the press men and women. We are always grateful to interact with you because for us, this is probably the most important platform that we use to speak to the nation. If you've seen the experience we've had in this parliament where in the main, our right to uh, debate has been guarded by the presiding officers. This is a breathing space that we find for ourselves. I'm here as usual to speak about the rule of law. I continue to be passionate about the rule of law uh, as a member of this bigger group for the Patriotic Front. Now, uh, I think the nation woke up to some information recently <coughs> of uh, His Excellency the Republican President being conferred with an honorary degree uh, in, uh, in Oxford. I am not going to speak about the merits or demerits of the honorary degree. I just want to remind the nation that there was an occasion when the 60th the Republican president uh, received an honorary degree from the University of Zambia, together with his counterpart, uh, President Munagagwa from Zimbabwe. There were some remarks that were made by the current president at that time about how the previous president was not deserving of an honorary degree. And I think by extension said that he would himself not avail himself to receiving honorary degrees that are degrees you obtain without working for them. But today, I just want to make a poignant point, you know, regarding what was spoken about during the conferring of the current president with an honorary degree. If you know if you are going to receive a degree, especially a PhD, whether studied or honorary, there's what is called a motivation speech. What motivates that university to give you that honorary degree? Why, in other words, does that university recognize you as a willing candidate to receive that honorary degree? <clears throat> In that statement, various aspects of what the recipient has done are outlined. What caught my eyes today was outlining a statement that this president was a freedom fighter who fought for democracy in this nation, and that in that fight he was even put on death row by the previous president. <laughs> and some are trying to compare him to Nelson Mandela. You know, I got astounded. I got very worried, and I got very concerned because it appears that this narrative is being propelled to the highest height. At the end of the day, our nation, which is known to be a thriving and admirable democracy in Africa, is going to earn a very bad name, that it subjected the current president to such atrocities that he was even put on death row you know, for an offense he may not have committed. My colleague, Honorable uh, Makebe Zulu, had taken an occasion to try and remind this president to do away with this quest to consistently suggest to the nation and now to the world that at one time in his political career he had been put on, on death row. This just never happened. It is not true and the president must not continue to project this untruth. It will not help us. And I'm told that there are those whom it has concerned in the nation who have decided that they're going to do a document or a letter to these institutions to correct the impression that the president has been making that he had been put on death row as, a, as one of the maybe prerequisite qualifications for him to make it as president of this nation. 
death row, ladies and gentlemen, is a legal term. It is defined. There are times or there are events that must occur before somebody can be put on death row. You must commit what is called a capital offense, which before the amendment to our constitution, in fact to the penal code, because we haven't even amended the constitution, I've already made the point that Zambia has not abolished the death penalty. So we still have death row in our constitution. But for you to be able to be placed on death row, first you must commit an offense which is a capital offense, like murder and treason. Sometimes aggravated robbery where death occurs. And other very, very serious offenses that are designated in our penal code as capital offenses. Secondly, you must be arrested by the police for committing that offense. And the police must subject you to a, you know, a procedure that brings you to the criminal justice system. You must be arraigned before the court, in this case, the High Court of Zambia, where they must hear your capital offense that you committed. Thirdly, evidence must be led to support that allegation that Mr. X and X committed a capital offense for which a punishment must be death. And that trial must progress until it gets to the end. You even have an opportunity to tender what is called a submission for a no case to answer before the court of law. You must be allowed an opportunity to tell the court that such evidence as has been presented before this court today is not sufficient for me to be put on capital, you know, on capital punishment. And when the court agrees with you, they're going to acquit you. If the court does not agree with you as a high court judge has got constitutional mandate, at least until the amendment of the penal court, to pronounce death row against an individual who appears before that court. In the case of the current president, none of what I've explained here actually transpired. The only thing that happened is that he was arrested on an allegation of wanting to commit treason. And the circumstances that led to that arrest are well known. We don't have to repeat them. There was a, you know, a drive past you know, in Mongo where they interfered with the movement of a presidential motorcade. We have said this so many times, not only myself, but many other people have said this so many times, that that was a very serious infraction of the law for which the police were justified to detain the president, then an opposition president. <clears throat> but in the exchanges that took place, including my own exchange, because I am one of those people that actually went and made a plea to then the president, uh, Dr. Edgar Lung, to say, look, this individual, yes, has committed an offense, but this is not an offense for which you can try him for treason. And looking at the political environment at that time, all of us pleaded and said this man must not be put on, you know, on trial for any offense. And Dr. Lungu, being the president that he was at that time, having listened to various views that were presented to him, decided to, to you know, to, to, to interfere with the process to allow the criminal procedure to be undertaken in such a way that the DPP herself made a decision and put this person on a nod. No, if you are let off at a nod, it is not the same as having been put on death row. A person who's on death row is removed from death row by a pardon from the president. And the only person who's got power to pardon a person who's on death row at that time was the president. But because the current president did not go through any criminal procedure that allowed that resulted into a conviction and a sentence, there was no need for him to be pardoned by the president then. And that's why the DPP is only exercised the powers under the Constitution and, 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 the, and the NPA Act and gave this, indi this individual, the current president, a non prosequi, which is basically a termination of criminal proceedings at the discretion of the Director of Public Prosecutions. So, Again, I just want to echo what my colleague uh, Makebe Zulu once said. The president must stem this debate. It is a misrepresentation, it is unnecessary, but most importantly, it is now beginning to paint our country wrongly black in the eyes of the international community, which is judging us. This is a democratic country, which is still democratic even now, even when we are now going through challenges in compliance with the rule of law and which is what I wanted to speak about today. And I want to use the case example of my colleague, you know, JJ Banda. The SG mentioned, so I'm not going to speak a lot about what he said, but I want to make certain very important points for the press to note 
on what is going on in the life of Honorable J.J. Banda. The most important point to make is that if you remember, the Republican president made a statement. That statement came from God knows where. He was dating the press on matters that had nothing to do with the rule of law. Somewhere, because something was happening with uh, Honorable J.J. Banda, he sneaked in a statement <clears throat> and said of J.J. Banda that this individual was a thug and that now government was looking at the case again because this individual, according to the assessment of the president, was a thug. Therefore, it appeared, and you see, when the president makes a statement which is official or from an official podium, he sets into motion certain activities that will ensue. The president made that statement, and the police got excited with that statement. Shortly thereafter, the nation woke up to the rude events of Mr. J.J. Banda going missing first, and then appearing you know, after some interventions, which included a presser that we held ourselves, in which we made a call for those that were holding J.J. Banda. That time we didn't even know he was being held by the police, to have him released back to his family. And he came back. Okay, Within that period, there was a statement, I, I, can't, I can't place the, 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 the events the way they unraveled, but there was a statement that was made by an individual called Peter Sukwa, you know, who marched individually to the office of the Chief Justice, claiming that he is deserving of justice, that a case that he was involved in with J.J. Banda way back in 2015 did not end, and he had not, he had not been satisfied. Now... There is something funny with an individual who decides that for him to seek justice, he's going to show up at the office of a chief justice. Because if you want to seek justice, you go to the police. Or you can make an appeal to the director of public prosecution saying that case was not properly ended. But this individual showed up at the Supreme Court with a placard and demanded justice from the chief justice himself. And the events you've seen, the way they have unraveled, you can see a pattern of scheming that this individual called J.J. Banda is going to become a victim. Now, he's going to become a victim of something that is very gullible. Okay, firstly, Mr. Banda was a victim of an abduction. He was kidnapped from his motor vehicle. The police swung into action, did whatever they could do. He, the police did not find J.J. Banda. The captors themselves are the ones who came and threw him on the roadside. The police could not even possibly gain credit, even if they purported to have gained credit, of what happened to J.J. Banda. It is the captors themselves who, for reasons that are yet to be, un to be revealed, decided to release J.J. Banda from the captivity where they're holding him. He was an assaulted individual. He was injured. He needed medical service. You saw us swing into action to help him. From that time, J.J. Banda has been kept out of circulation by the police deliberately. For the simple reason that there's one statement J.J. Banda has to make, and if he makes it out of his mouth to the listening of the public, it will possibly divert this whole case into a real case that actually happened. So we are being fitted with falsities. We are being fitted with an unreal picture. The police has concocted, you know, a very... You don't, you don't even know how to explain what they've concocted. But there's a story that is only showing the public fiction. The real story is hiding behind the curtain. Because how are we going to know the real story until J.J. Banda has allowed an opportunity to come to the public and speak for himself what transpired? His lawyers have used every available avenue they have, including making a petition to court, insisting that J.J. Banda's constitutional rights must be respected. This has not been responded to by the state. Instead, the state has just continued on the ploy to keep J.J. Banda from circulation. And now, unfortunately, They've arrested him again. When he was due for discharge at Minasoko Hospital, they felt obliged to release him. You know, and the police decided they're going to pick him and make him and put him in their own, in their own, where, where they basically wanted to keep him. I, with other lawyers, decided, look, maybe we need to try and help this individual. We went, we sought uh, permission to speak to the police. They were not yielding. I went and saw J.J. Banda the night before he was taken. That's when, that's when, in fact, he disclosed to me that, no, now they're deciding they're taking me to Chipata, where they want to go and formally charge me. The issue of his kidnapping has, has, has just been worked on by the state. They're not going to do anything about it. But see, the truth is always the truth. You can never conceal the truth for the longest time. 
this case says that JJ Banda is going to appear before in court. If you if you've heard what transpired, they've now charged him with aggravated robbery. They've charged him with attempted murder, arising from the circumstances of his interactions or his the exchange that they had with this Peter Sukwa, who, like I said earlier, had shown up at the Chief Justice's office demanding justice. So the response has now come, and JJ Banda has been arrested. We are we are hoping they can arraign him as soon as possible. You know, this is a this is a representative of the people. He's a member of parliament for a constituency. His people are missing his representation. If genuinely the police think they want to try him for those cases, I hope they can bring him to justice as soon as possible so that he can quickly have his day in court and have his matter heard. But the point I want to part with, Chair, is that we need to get to a stage, and I'm making, I'm making a passionate appeal to the Republican president. We need to make to get to a stage quickly as a nation where such controversial statements as calling a member of parliament do not emanate from the mouth of a president. Because when you make such a statement, you throw into operation or you trigger a series of events where people are not going to be objective in handling the matter concerning a victim or a citizen that you've spoken about. When the president said JJ Banda is a thug, you have, the whole nation has seen exactly how the police has proceeded in handling the matter of JJ Banda. There's no objectivity at all. I can bet you. Go and pick up every statement that Ray Hamonga has made from the time JJ Banda was arrested up to today. It contains nothing but falsities. There's no truth about it. His lawyers have spoken the truth. They've been walked around. JJ Banda has named his captors. The state has not done anything in terms of having him, even just questioning the captors, nothing has happened. So is JJ Banda being treated according to the rule of law? My statement, sir, is that the treatment of JJ Banda in this matter, I'm not addressing the issue of whether JJ Banda committed the offenses or not. I'm addressing the issue of how do you treat an individual who has been suspected to have committed offense. This government prides itself to be government of the rule of law. The rule of law, I've always argued, is not a statement in void. The rule of law is a, is a Siamese twins to what is called the due process of law. When you have to arrest an individual, you must avail him all available avenues that are in the Constitution and in the law to defend himself. That is called due process. The treatment that we have seen J.J. Banda go through is beneath due process. People have been saying we have spoke, spoken too much about J.J. Banda's case. The reason is very simple. J.J. Banda faces the citizen of this nation. If what happens to J.J. Banda is allowed to go and abase it, it can happen to anybody else. In fact, it's been happening to so many people. We are now living in a country where if you don't belong to the UPND, and there must be candid about it, your treatment before the criminal justice system will be beneath due process. If you belong to the UPND, on the other hand, the law will not visit you. It's a clear case. You can, there's no distinction that you can, you, you can fail to draw out of it. There are senior members of the UPND who have committed serious offenses. They are actually being defended by the system. Private citizens have even dared to take their cases to court. I'll use just one case for the Secretary General of the UPND, who branded the Archbishop of Lusaka as a Lucifer. Now, if you want to talk about hate crime, you don't even have to describe it. But this individual has been shielded from prosecution. He has not been arrested. He has not been arraigned before the court of law. When a private citizen decided to take a matter before the court of law, the DPP came and curtailed the proceedings. You call that rule of law? You call that due process of law? The judgment is yours for you to make. But the reality is that we are now living at a stage where there are two systems, two legal systems that are operating. One that is very subjective, used against you. Another one that is very subjective, used to protect anybody who is associated with the UPND. And that is a very dangerous place we are beginning to live as a nation. I hope we can very quickly find solutions to what is going on in the nation and get back to what we had promised the people were going to do. The rule of law is uniform. It has not distinguished in its application to citizens. Thank you very much. This is DJ Mutati Exclusive. Savage.
Alright, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutati Mpondu. I love you, peace. I gotta go.